the need for health evangelism. And this is on there. And this is kind of what we're saying for this whole weekend, the, the entering wedge situation. Uh, here we are standing up on the, on the, the pile of Adventist truth, and we're saying to the world, come on here where we are. And someone says, yes, I'm interested, I'm coming. And then they try, but they can't get up. Why not? Because they need an entering wedge. And so in scenario two, it's we say, hold on, I'm coming to meet you. So we meet them where they're at. And then they say, thank you, that's just what I need. And so that's kind of what we're trying to accomplish here this weekend, to help people who are in need, who are in pain, who have problems. I mean, we all do, but we, we want to be able to help people who are needing some help, and that's what we do there. So what do you think of that? Uh, this is what we're talking about here, boosting the immune system, the body's bodyguards. And I chose Arnold Schwarzenegger because he was the Terminator and he was a bodyguard to that little boy. And it's all about viruses, bacteria, parasites, foreign proteins and disease. And that's what we're de dealing with here today. We are here to protect, find out how can we protect ourselves from all those bad guys. So you are wanting to do a program in your church. And the very first step you do is say, I want to share a program uh, and in my uh, community. So you go to your church board and at your church board, you share with them that particular handout that you got. So your church board now is motivated. You spend maybe five, 10, 15 minutes going through just the highlights of that because it get really bored and read the whole thing. And then uh, there's that, that chart there. And then we talk about the, the 12, uh, the, the, the um, eight natural doctors, and we're gonna add more, because Ellen White talks more about just that eight. We see that famous quote of Ministry of Healing 127. She also adds a sense of purpose is needed for optimal health, for optimal vitality. To have an aim in life makes a physiological difference. And also loving relationships, uh, and also the very last one there, a strategic plan. So we're adding those three to the, what you might call the new start acronym. And so we're gonna come up with another acronym that kind of takes all into account. We'll call it full power. Now, you're still at the board. You're trying to inspire your church board to do some kind of program to help people either in the church or in the church and in the community. And you talk about the love of Jesus and the heart breaking of Jesus as he looks upon the pain in the world. And we don't need to go very far to, to see that. And then uh, you can show this picture or just talk about it, because someone guess what or where is this in the Bible, the Bible seat? What? Yeah, Pula Bethesda, chapter 5 of John. And what Jesus is about to say is the model for what we can say to the world. What's he about to say? Those of you who know your Bibles well, and you just zoom right in on this. He says, do you, want, do you want to be made well? The man at the Pool of Bethesda has been sick for 38 years. We don't need to go into the details, but just recognize that he represents our neighbors. And so we go to our neighbors, we go to our cities, we go to our towns, even people in our church. And rather than start with what we want and what we think is right, we ask them the question, do you want to be made well? And that's where we start when we do health evangelism. Are you interested? Is this something that you really want? And that's where I like to start as well. Now, you're still at your church board and you're trying to convince them. Uh, this is a uh, concept which we shared an awful lot this weekend. I'm not going to repeat that part, the entering wedge situation. But I would like to uh, observe this part here from Cole Porter Evangelist 72. When the third angel's message is received in its fullness, health reform will be given its place in the councils of the conference and the work of the church. And so we now have uh, what I believe is inspired writing, motivation, um, uh, vindication, you know, whatever you want to put it, to say, listen, church, we need to do this. This is, this is cool. This is, this is something that, that we really need to do. And so after you've done that, step two is you ask for a motion. You're at your church board. 
you give them a little presentation and you ask for a motion. This is your call to action. And the motion could go something like this. If you happen to be on the board, you can make your own motion. If you happen to be a, a guest to the board, you can ask uh, the chair of the board to uh, ask for a motion. It could go something like this. Voted to invite Jane Brown to run a health program. Uh, diabetes undone, uh, full power, uh, how to boost your vitality, uh, depression recovery, you just fill in the blank. Voted to invite Jane Brown to run a something program March 3 to 5, 2024 in our church with a budget of $1,000. Um, so you've asked for the motion, they make the motion, and they let you do it. And so you gather your, your team together, and you now notify the people. The people are the people on your interest list, or your friends, or somebody who might be reading the newspaper, or listening to the radio, or looking at the Facebook ads, whatever it may be. You notify the people that you now are going to be running some kind of a program in one way or another. When you notify them, here is the kind of uh, format you can use, which, which according to some of the marketing uh, uh, people will say, this is what gets results. And it's kind of following what Jesus actually did in the gospel. Number one, you identify the pain, the problem that they're having, uh, and, and the problem that you're offering to solve. This is, you identify the pain. Just let them know, and I'll read it in a little bit. Number two, you identify the outcome. So you paint a picture of the outcome that they're going to experience when they come to your program. What exactly do you want them to walk away with? So you're very clear in that, and you have that in writing uh, somewhere. And then you describe the program that will facilitate the transformation. Whether it's, uh, in, in the business world, it's the product, it's the service. Well, we're offering a service. We're offering a service to help people relieve them of pain and to prevent disease, et cetera, et cetera, to find peace and all those things. And then just like you did at the board, you have a call to action for the people who are now interested because they are reading what you just wrote and they have that pain. They have that problem. They just got told by their doctor that, uh, that they have cancer and they have like three years to live or something like that. Whatever it is, we're kind of zeroing right in on that. So I'm going to read just a, a, um, an example, don't need to do this at all, but this is what I've done recently. Lifestyle medicine emerging as a new hope for optimal vitality. It's like a newspaper headline, okay? New hope, and it's not focusing on the pharmaceuticals, it's focusing on lifestyle medicine, which is what we're all about. Uh, so you could also put where it says, uh, emerging as a new hope for optimal vitality Emerging as a new hope for boosting the immune system. Or it's emerging as a new hope for reversing diabetes. Whatever it is, you just put that in there because have, have you noticed that the health message really is, is powerful when it comes to helping people with type 2 diabetes, even partially with type 1 diabetes. It's but the very same... Um, Diet and program and, and lifestyle changes that help with diabetes also help with what? With heart disease, with cancer reduction, or at least, you know, all the other things too. Uh, tension, hypertension, all those things, and, and including boosting your immune system. So you can put in anything you want there as long as you know that it's a, um, a product of, of the lifestyle change, whatever you want to put in there. So I'm going to read. Fred, and this is, I know the guy Fred is from Maple Ridge. Fred was on 23 pills a day. Remember, I'm trying to, I'm going to go back, identify the pain. Okay, I'm going to try and identify with your pain. So I'm thinking that Fred might identify with your pain, telling a little bit of the story. Fred was on 23 pills a day and couldn't walk across the kitchen without losing his breath. His doctors had done all they could. He used a man, he used to be a man of strength. But now he's about to give up on life. Fred attended a lifestyle medicine program called CHIP, Complete Health Improvement Program in Maple Ridge, British Columbia, where I was a pastor at that time. At the graduation banquet four weeks later, he proudly announced he was down to four pills a day and was able to hop on his bike for the first time in years 
and cycle to Mission and back every day, a round trip of 48 kilometers. And he was able to go from gasping in his kitchen to riding 48 kilometers on a bike in four weeks. That's a true story. I know the guy. I'm the one who worked with him. He was a terribly grumpy person when I first met him. Uh, yeah. He was a pill, a bitter pill to swallow. But he was the best student in the end. Uh, Francis had end-stage heart disease and suffered from pain at every step. After doing all they could, including multiple heart bypasses, her doctor gave her one year to live. She was sent home in a wheelchair to die. Some of you may know who Francis is if you happen to have read the book How Not to Die by Michael Greger, because it happens to be his grandmother. Determined to stay alive, to see her grandchildren grow up, including little Michael Greger, she traveled across the country from Florida to California to get help from a lifestyle center where they taught her the principles of lifestyle medicine. Beyond doctor's expectations, Frances recovered, tossed the wheelchair, and within 21 days, she was able to walk 10 miles a day, pain-free. 21 days. It happened. That's what inspired Michael Greger to become a doctor, to do what he can for the world to, to, to match what they did for his grandmother. She lived another 31 years to see her grandchildren graduate and marry. So the, you praise the Lord for that. It's wonderful. And that happened, right? You can read about it in Michael Greger's book called How Not to Die. It's in the preface. The stories of France, and I'm still reading. This is what, in a sense, you would be, you don't have to write it this way, but there's an example of how to write it so you can attract people to your program. The stories of Francis and Fred illustrate the power of lifestyle medicine. In a world where chronic illnesses are surging and the healthcare system straining, lifestyle medicine is emerging as a new hope for strong immune systems, long-term health, vitality for both young and old. The principles of lifestyle medicine are here packaged into an evidence-based groundbreaking program called, and whatever it is that you got, uh, I put in mind right here, full power, nature's formula for optimal vitality. Now it's uh, getting ready for the call to action. But first of all, you're gonna explain the system of transformation. It's a specialized lifestyle makeover program complete with food samples that combines personal growth principles with health principles that revived Fred and Francis. So we're harking back to the opening of the letter. Principle, uh, participants walk away with renewed hope, strength, and a plan for lifelong vitality, both physical and mental. They learn how to prevent, and in many cases, reverse heart disease, obesity, cancers, diabetes, stroke, arthritis, depression, food addictions, and other chronic diseases. Now the call to action. If you are determined to take control of your health, attend the free information session at 6 p.m. September 24 at the Kelowna Lifestyle Center on Springfield Road. There you'll be given an opportunity to register for the full power nature's formula for optimal vitality. Uh, that's what they're actually gonna be doing tomorrow. Uh, in Kelowna, and that's what I wrote for them because I'll be coming there next week to, to do that. So the idea here is that you have gone to your church board, you've inspired them to want to uh, fund the program because it's going to help people, it's going to please Jesus, it's going to help his broken heart as he sees us all. Now it's time for the program. And so your program, here's uh, the title that I have used for my program, but you've got your own titles, Running on Full Power, Nature's formula for optimal vitality. Now, if you're interested, you can see what I did on this whole thing by, I just uh, preached a sermon uh, four weeks ago, I was in Nova Scotia, and a place called Tantalon, SDA Church. So let's go to YouTube, and I spoke for 55 minutes on this. Not boosting vitality, but on the full power. So if you're interested, go and check it out. Uh, Tantalon, SDA Church, and it's August 26th that I did that, and. It, kind of looks like this if you were to get there. Uh, so there you go. So now you're at the program. People have come. You have 10 people, you have 50 people, whoever you've got. And, and so now you're going to uh, talk to them either in public or it could be at someone's living room, it could be at a church hall, it could be at a rented hall, whatever it is. And you start by amplifying their angst. Remember, they came because they have a pain 
And you promised you could help them with that pain, that problem. And so we're going to talk about that pain and that problem, and maybe you are one of these people, we would say. Blood, high, maybe you have high blood pressure. We'll start off the top one anyway. 80% of adults have one or more chronic diseases. Well, that's really, really bad. And so we pretty well know that you know, 80% of the people who live in our town will have one of these things. And so no wonder Jesus said that the fields are ripe for the harvest. Because there's a lot of people who are just hungering and crying for this sort of thing. And God gave us the answer. This is, I think, is marvelous. So you can talk about that. I won't read it all. And then uh, you can talk about how what is currently ongoing is not going to work forever, i.e. the medical care system. You can look up in the news and look up pictures, and I have them, uh, of all kinds of health care crisis news articles. Uh, nurses are going on strike because they need more staffing and it's not fair for the work you know, environment, et cetera. Or over in India, where you have like one doctor for 10,000 people and people are dying waiting for the doctor. It's just a healthcare crisis all over the world. And so we've got this going on, and this just happens to be one tiny little representation of that. It happened to be uh, from Dr. Greg Steinke, the son of Lloyd and Betty Steinke, who are here today. And he, I, I get his emails now, uh, and his, 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 uh, his partner, his business partner in there too. So uh, there is a growing shortage, they wrote, of medications and stock in pharmacies around the country. Unfortunately, we're seeing more and more medication shortages in local pharmacies. This relates to what you just wrote to get people to come to your program because we're saying, do you want to take your health into your own hands? Because we will more and more have to. And, and, and we can quote all kinds of statistics about the healthcare crisis is only going to get worse. In 2037 years from now, we're going to need about 85 million healthcare people around the world to keep us you know, going. And we're only gonna have, so 80 million, and we're only gonna have 65 million. So we're gonna have a healthcare crisis for the next seven years at least and on into the second coming, I'm pretty sure. So all the more reason why God is asking you and me to learn lifestyle medicine, to learn the health message from God. He provided Mother Nature for us so that we can learn all these things so we can help people because they're not going to be able to depend on drugs forever. Uh, so I did that. Now, so for me, I, I put in there personal growth principles plus lifestyle medicine equal optimal vitality. That's the premise. So that's, the, that's what I'm basically saying you put these two things together, you got yourself optimal vitality, which is all about boosting your immune system, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to, could you help me here? Um, I have 300 scrap pieces of paper. Thank you. Uh, just pass them around. Take about maybe four pieces of paper and crunk, uh, crinkle them up. Uh, and you will be throwing these at a target. Okay, so that's, and they will be representing uh, viruses and bacteria and, and diseases and foreign proteins and everything else. Now, but the thing is, I, I, I need a volunteer to, to be the target. And so, any, <laughs> Ron, are you volunteering? All right, Ron's going to volunteer. I'm glad because we need somebody who's not going to have a, an emotional breakdown because y you are going to throw something at this guy. Uh, so. Crunkle up your paper. If we had time, we'd write down a disease on that paper. You know, whatever disease it may be, you know, cancer, diabetes, whatever it is, we'd write that on there. So crunkle up your paper, and once it all gets passed out, and um, now I'm going to do this twice. So take half your uh, crumpled up papers. If you only have two, just throw one, uh, and save the one for next time. And then we're going to do something, and then we're going to do it again. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have people stand up and throw your paper at our, vi uh, sorry, our, our uh, participant. Uh, <laughs> now, Ron, can you come up here? Uh, thank you, Ron. Now, we, <laughs> yes, we need some help. So, Ron, we need somebody to, to take the part and act like a human being. Can you do that? Yeah, no okay. problem. Yes, you can. That's good. 
And so, uh, Ron, could you stand right about, say, here? Because we want to give you, uh, uh, let's see, yeah, that'd be one, maybe one foot back. Okay, good. So, um, the first row, and we'll have you be the first row and you be the second row and, and you guys there, okay? So, there's, there's three rows. So, you stand up. Now, what I'm going to ask Ron to do is to block what you are throwing at him because you represent disease, all right? And I need to have somebody count what he couldn't block because... He, he, you're going to hit him. You might hit his knee, you might hit his chest, you might hit his arm, but he's going to use his hand and his forearm to kind of protect himself. But we need to know how many diseases or viruses or bacteria actually hit the rest of his body. Could somebody volunteer to count that for me, please? Thank you, uh, Lori. Uh, and you're ready to go here? Good. She's, yeah, she's really excited about this. You have to take over. All right, okay. Now, then, when we do that, I'm going to uh, make sure, Lori, you kind of give it, I know you won't be able to count accurately. I recognize it's going to be so fast. Then we're going to go to the next row and the next row and the next row. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Just throw one at a time. Right? One at a time. Okay. If you have only two crumpled pieces of paper, only throw one. If you happen to have three, well, you can throw two if you want. But save at least one for another uh, game that we're going to be playing. So we've got to save one. Pardon? Yes, you can come. You can do anything you want. Yes. Anything. Anything you... This is disease we're talking about here. It's bad. All right? You never know what's going to happen when a disease hits you, Mr. Sir. Okay. <laughs> All right, are you ready? All right, so... These three tables on your market set, go. All right, counting, counting. Yes, row. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You're you counting, Lori. All right, oh, 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 yes. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 okay, keep on going. What about you guys? You throw them already? You can go, you can go. All right, keep on throwing, 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 throwing. All right, good, all right, now. Thank you. Good. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Only those rows yet, okay? We're going to get to you guys in the back now. Now, he did okay, but that doesn't always represent real life. So the next group of people, I want you to throw them all at once. Don't go one, then one, then one, then one. He can, he can, you saw what he did there. So I'm going to all stand up, please. Okay, those of you in the back, stand up. And I'm going to count from, I'll go three, two, one, throw. And you all throw at one time. Lori, are you ready to count? Okay. Okay. Can I move? Not yet. No, your feet got to stay there. I haven't, I haven't, I, we have, countdown hasn't happened yet. All right. Are you ready? Three, two, one, throw. <laughs> you get that, Lori? Okay. Now, did everybody have a chance to throw? Is there anyone else? All right. Okay, Lori, what was your approximate count? How much? One and three. Yes, it's, it's very good. It's very good. All right, now we're going to do that again. But this time, this looks kind of pretty up here. Um, this time, I need some volunteers from the back, nine of them, to stand in front of them. You get the idea, don't you? All right, so everybody in the back, you come up here and stand in front of Ron and hide him. Now, notice what he did. He put me in front of him. And I got hit. So those hits that I got, you should count them for him. Really. So add on another 15 or something. Yeah. All right, so line up. Get right close together. Right close together. There you go. Really close, very close. Yeah, okay. All right. Now, oh, good, good, good. Now, uh, from, don't go behind him or anything like that, but from where you are, I'm now going to ask again the first three, you, you, and you. All right. 
throw it one time. I'm going to go three, two, one, throw. Everyone throw it once. But try to hit Ron. Okay? <laughs> try to hit Ron. Now, you guys, protect Ron. Are you ready? Okay, three, two, one, throw. <laughs> All right. Did you get hit, Ron? Okay. All right, now, the next uh, half of the audience, you come on up. Uh, come as close as you want. Bonnie, if you want to kick him, you can. And uh, so I'll do a three, two, one. But you got to get through these people first. All right, so are you guys ready? Okay, remember, you're trying to hit Ron, but you guys are trying to protect Ron. So don't let Ron get hit. Okay. Three, two, one, throw. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay, Lori, I don't suppose you got all that. <laughs> and see you. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, Ron, stay up here, please, for me. Um, so, Ron, how did you feel when you were uh, all by yourself? A little vulnerable. Okay. How did you feel when you had nine protectors? Like I was protected. Very well put. Um, and so, what we're going to do right now is I've just illustrated something that you can do in your church and your community. The difference between someone who has a strong immune system versus somebody who has a weak immune system. If you have a weak immune system, you're going to get hit a lot more. And I think you said 1 plus 3 plus the 15 that I got So at the first time. And, and then when all the protectors were there, do you know how many? Can you nine. guess? You got hit nine, nine times? Nine protectors. How many nine. Times? I got hit once. You got hit once. So notice that the amount of disease, bacteria, viruses went way, way, way down because he had a strong immune system. Uh, if you don't want to do that with people in your church or in your community, you can just put this picture up if you want or find one like it on the internet. Uh, I used to love hockey and, and pretend that you're the net and the goalie is your protector and that puck is the disease. And it's kind of like, oh man, uh, that's what we're doing. Okay, we're just getting rid of disease. Now, a lot of the, the stuff that I'm, that I'm using uh, comes from these sources. Uh, there's a lot more sources as well. I'm not going to read them all, but I will go over some of them because these are good sources. Uh, a lot of these sources uh, relate to and are consistent with the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. And I think it's so marvelous that uh, what the Bible wrote, what the spirit of prophecy, uh, what's in the spirit of prophecy, is just so amazingly being um, um, found out by science, like even now, it's just so amazing. Uh, and so uh, the Blue Zones, the CHIP program, SilverHillsHealthNutritionFacts.org, highly recommend that, it's Michael Drager's website. He doesn't get any money for it. Uh, Loma Linda University School of Health, uh, Harvard Health, American College of Lifestyle Medicine, ACLM, Dr. Hans Deal and Michael Drager were on the committee for that, and <coughs> probably for other people that we know. Observations from participants in lifestyle intervention programs is also part of the research as well uh, for part of this. So I'll, I'll MedCram, the very one bottom there, that's put up by Roger Schilt, Roger Schilt, he's an Adventist doctor in Loma Linda. He's got a lot of good stuff. It's mainly for doctors. He's got a lot of high fluting language in that one, but he's got a lot of good stuff there. And you know that everything he says from science will agree with uh, what's already in the Bible and spirit of prophecy. So that's kind of a cool thing to have. Uh, Dr. Neil Bernard, to Colin Campbell, uh, Hans Deal, Michael, John McDougal, Michael Greger, Rangan Chatterjee, I liked him. Uh, you can see him on YouTube. Uh, Caldwell Esselstyn, Joel Furman, Dr. Gabor Matei, Susan Pierce Thompson, Miranda Esmond White. Uh, she's the one who does exercises and stretching and stuff like that. So these are some of the sources that I've used in, in my book uh, as we take a look at all of those principles uh, for optimal vitality, for boosting your immune system, for being as healthy as you possibly can. These are premised upon two paradigm-shifting principles. And this, these two principles will be what um, makes us, as a Seventh-day Adventist church, unique uh, in the world around us. Now, we're not so much unique when we compare ourselves to, say, the research by, say, T. Cullen Campbell and some of the other ones that I just put up there, but unique in contrast to, say, the pharmaceutical industry or a lot of the traditional uh, healthcare uh, uh, treatments and using drugs. One, principle one, first causes in the domino effect. This is a pretty major principle. If you can imagine 
uh, I'm going to show you a picture of a domino. And some, I'll just write this in here first. Compounding effect of natural health principles. So I'll, I'll get into that right now. Let's talk about the first one. First causes in the domino effects. Conceptualize the current health care system, the pharmaceutical industry, as treating the effects at the end of the domino cause and effect, uh, the domino, what do you call that? Domino effect, all right? So when someone has a fatal heart attack, the last domino has fallen. But it was caused by something that happened before it, which was caused by something that happened before that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What the current healthcare system does is treat these last few dominoes. That's okay, I'm glad they do. Because, you know, if I happen to have something and I need them, I'm glad they're there. But what the health message does from the Seventh-day Adventist Church and from the Bible is it goes back to the first dominoes. And so in the first dominoes, they are so far back, it could be 10 dominoes back or 100 dominoes back, of cause and effect, that someone would say, if you do this over here, like knock over the first domino, it has an indirect effect on this over here. Now, that is what we're going to leverage when we teach principles of health and how to boost your immune system. That's what we're going to leverage. You could say the difference between what we're doing at this program and what many uh, other uh, health institutions do is that we're, we're getting at the first dominoes and not the last ones. That's the idea. We want to prevent those last dominoes from falling by making the first domino be a different domino. So it's a whole new cause and effect chain uh, that's going on. Does that make sense? So that's a very important principle to recognize that that's what we do. And, and so uh, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a doctor of ministry, which uh, the Greek word for ministry means serving. So I'm a doctor of serving you. I'm here to serve you, body, soul, and spirit. And so those kinds of principles relate to the first domino. And those kinds of things have an effect as you keep on having the cause and effect chain on the last domino. So that's what we want to do. Now the second one, compounding effect of natural health principles. Uh, please understand that there is no one thing that's going to be the answer to it all. There's no one silver bullet. Oh, vitamin C is going to save my life. Well, it's going to help, but it's not going to be everything. That new weight loss program, yeah, it might help, but it's not going to be everything. So what I'd like you to understand here is imagine that this stick figure is, is you or the people in your community that you're talking to. And the zero to 100 happens to be your level of vitality, the strength of your immune system, let's say. And the silver bullet approach is that, say, in six months, you tried some, you know, something you read in a book or a program you saw online or whatever it is. It even could be a money-making program, whatever it is, you know, but we're talking about health right now. And in six months, yes, you do increase your life health by, say, 10%. But what we're going to and notice the story of Fred and Francis. That was way more than that. Way more than that. When you get God's principles involved in God's creatures, God who knows our bodies way more than we do, he knows the prescriptions that we need. And when we actually switch over and go entirely what God says to do, then it says in the Bible, we will have none of these diseases. Doesn't it say that? Am I reading that right? It says, it says that. Do you believe it? It's kind of hard to believe because a lot of disease in this world. But Francis and Fred and so many others perhaps that you've heard of and that you know of, maybe you're one, have experienced some of these wonderful things. So there's no silver bullet, but there is a golden formula. So going from silver to gold, um, imagine now instead of just trying that one thing that you heard about, you're going to put all the principles together and do them all. Now, sometimes the question comes in, you mean, do them all at once? And it depends on what kind of personality you have. Some people need to do it all at once because they have this sense of motivation and anticipation of a great change. So they'll do it all at once. Usually those people are the addictive personalities. 
Uh, a lot of the people say, oh, I'm too busy, I can't do it all at once, let me just start a little bit on time. So you decide what you want to do and, and tell this to the people that you're talking to as well. But here are the principles. So here you go in six months, you're way up there now at 100%. Uh, and this is just for illustration purposes. We don't know it's going to take six months. It could take longer, it could take shorter, I don't know. But this is the idea. And so what's causing that? The principles that we read about in Ministry of Healing 127 and other principles I package into what I call full power. So full power is an acronym kind of like New Start or Creation Health or some of the other ones. And so the full power, what are these principles? Uh, so uh, we'll kind of put some names on them now as we go along. So number one, fulfill your purpose. Two, unleash positive spirituality, which begs the question, is there negative spirituality? We've got to talk about that. It's the elephant in the room sometimes when we talk. Uh, uh, to people about God and church. Uh, three, uh, loveify your life. Loveify means basically the ability to give and receive or to give and attract love. The ability to do that has a difference on your immune system. Uh, launch your plan. It's no good to know things. You don't do anything about it. Uh, prioritize high octane fuel. For us, we're talking about a plant-based diet. I'd like to say plant-powered diet. Sometimes I use the word vegan or vegetarian I'd, I'd rather not use those words because uh, you can drink beer and have potato chips and french fries and be a vegan. And that's not healthy. And so what do we do? We say whole foods, plant-based. That's what we're saying. So whole foods, plant-based. Foods as grown. You can pick it off a tree or in a bush in your garden. That's the type of food we're talking about that's high octane fuel. And so uh, omit what is harmful. Ellen White calls that what? Yeah, temperance, yeah. Or another word, even an older word, abstemiousness. Uh, but you say omit what is harmful, like drugs, you know, and smoking, and sugar, salt, and fat, and white flour, stuff like that. Water up, exercise outdoors, and rest up. Now, exercise outdoors is actually three doctors in one. Because it's exercise, it's sunlight, and what else? It's fresh air. So you got three in one. So I had to put the three into one in order to make the full power acronym work. And so that's what we got going on. And when you do that, you got yourself a life of full power. And so this is the promise that we're giving to people and that I'm giving to you right now, that if we actually take seriously these health principles, it'll create some wonderful change in your life. And there's so many testimonies that prove that to be very true. And so uh, you don't have to do this, of course. This is my system. Um, but here is... Uh, full power, and these are like cylinders, and uh, you get to rate yourself on the habits that are related to each of those principles. And then if you do that, just number it all up and get 52 out of 100, and then here you're, you're lower on this one, you're low on that one, but you're high on that one. And the idea, of course, is to see what you can do to get your performance level up to, uh, you know, 70, 80, 90 percent, whatever it may be. And it adds a little bit of fun uh, if you're kind of marking yourself like a game and you get points for doing this kind of stuff. And then if you get up to, uh, in the program that I uh, have, uh, if you get over 50, you get a bronze, if you get 60, you get a silver, and if you get, I think, 85, you get gold. And so you, you kind of just get a medal. The idea is just to go to get a medal, that's the idea. And it's supposed to be motivating as we go along. So the idea is to have high in all of them. I've never seen anybody who has. The highest one that, ever, that I've ever seen is someone who got 86. But you have to remember, it's not a standardized test. It's all subjective. And so we can't standardize this across the country or anything like that. So that's the if you get 10, 10, 10, 10, uh, 20 here, because uh, you get more points for simply doing something, not simply knowing something. So it all adds up to uh, 100 as we go along. Uh, so now we're talking about the immune system, and <coughs> and I won't be talking about the uh, acute kind of immune system types of things which we can do to boost our immune system. I'll be talking about more of the general idea uh, habits that we can have every day for the rest of our lives. There's so much more we can say about the immune system, of course. But there are three kind of immune systems or three parts to the immune system. It's just so complex. Anything I say will be way oversimplified, but for the sake of illustrating, I'll do the best that I can. The first one is the frontline uh, system. It's the skin and mucus. So our skin, of course, and then we can have bacteria getting through our eyes or ears or nose or mouth, et cetera. And so 
And the, the gut, which is the, the pipe that goes from our mouth to our anus and everything in between, there's a mucus lining on that, and all that's part of our immune system as well. And so if that has not been compromised, then we have a strong immune system. I'm oversimplifying. That and the skin together make up the frontline immune system. Number two, the innate uh, part of the immune system is where the white blood cells come in. That's where the, uh, the, the army, the, the, the bodyguards, the white blood cells come in and they kind of destroy those bacteria and stuff. And you can perhaps imagine that. And then the, the third uh, part of the immune system is the adaptive immune system. And that's what creates antibodies. Uh, and so I'll talk about antibodies in, in a little while. So that's kind of like a overly simplified summary of the uh, parts of the immune system. And like I say, it's really oversimplified. And there's some white blood cells under an electron microscope. Don't ask me why they're pink if they're white. I have no idea. Of course, they color things I know just so we can see them better. Um, now, you, uh, it was interesting in, in my research, uh, I recognized that they have this thing called inflammation, and, and it's a big deal. It's been in the literature way more than the last 10 years than ever before. Inflammation, anything ending in itis is inflammation, okay? So arthritis, tonsillitis, bronchitis, conjunctivitis, dermatitis, gastritis, hepatitis, myocarditis, sinusitis, tendonitis, and on and on and on. So there's, and so much, this is, these are just examples. And so when you have an itis of any kind, you know that's inflammation. And when you have inflammation, you know that that's your immune system in action. Now, usually, that's good in a healthy person. But what's wrong is if it becomes what? Chronic immune, uh, chronic inflammation. <clears throat> if I could illustrate the good and the bad part, imagine that you are a, a celebrity, uh, like, say, Ron Donatelli was up here. And something goes wrong. And let's say you're a celebrity and you're walking down the street and there's people taking snapshots of you because you're famous and rich and everything else. And then something goes wrong and the bodyguards that you have come in and there's, uh, and then maybe an ambulance comes in because you, know, you broke your leg or something and it congests the traffic, both for walking and driving. And it's a good thing because we need to have acute care right now. But what if the bodyguards and the ambulance and the firemen and all, you know, all of the response people stuck around for another three months, um, blocking traffic for three months? That's not a good thing. And so that's what happens inside of our bodies. And it's not just for three months. It could be for three decades. And when that happens, it blocks the functioning, the healthy functioning of many systems in our bodies, including our brain, which relates to our mind and how we think, how we feel. And so it's amazing how all that works. So inflammation, whenever you hear that, oh, someone has inflammation, just know that's the immune system at work. If it's chronic inflammation, that's the immune system run amok, okay? Um, so now let's go through briefly the, the nine principles, and I picked nine people to protect Ron because those are the nine principles that if Ron were to do them every day, the habits every day, then he'd be a, a superman and, and he could uh, you know, go anywhere he wants, fly above buildings, everything else. He could do it all. Uh, he's almost doing that now. Ron, I, I have a picture. I, no, I won't show the picture. Uh, all right. I don't have it here anyway, Ron, so you're, you're safe. But I can, get, I can get my other program out and I can show it if you want. <clears throat> anyway, number one, full power. So I have the letters in white, but the one I'm going to highlight is what's in yellow. So the F is yellow. And so that's find your superpower, fulfill your purpose. Some people find their purpose, look for their purpose. Maybe they don't have a purpose. But some people create their purpose by finding their superpower. In the Bible, we call that spiritual gifts, talents, strengths. Just know what they are. If you don't know what your strengths are, if you don't know what your spiritual gifts are, if you don't know what your talents are, what you're good at, then I can guarantee you that your life in the future can be far better 
than it was in the past. Because you can learn what they are. And that contributes to your purpose. When you have that sense of purpose, that actually helps your immune system. Maybe I can put it this way. You get 10 points if you can pronounce that word. <laughs> you do pretty good there. Let me make it a little simpler. Psychoneuroimmunology, right? Psychoneuroimmunology. Okay, so each of these uh, are uh, basically, uh, I don't know about the third one, but the other ones are Greek words. Psycho is the mind, neuro is uh, uh, cell, uh, neuron cell. Immuno means uh, protection, and, and logi is where the word logos comes from. You know, Jesus was the word and all that. So the study of, or words about, or wisdom on. And so it's a study of uh, how the mind affects the physiology of the brain in making the body strong to protect itself against disease. Okay, so when we're talking about uh, the subject matter of how having a sense of purpose, having an aim, affects so many, uh, like a thousand more things in your life, we're dealing with this psychoneuroimmunology. That's what we're dealing with. Studies the interaction between psychological factors, the nervous system, and the immune system. Fulfilling your purpose has, an, it has indirect benefits on the immune system. Now, when I say indirect, you know what I mean, right? The other end of the, the, the cause and effect, domino effect, right? It's near the beginning. Having a sense of purpose knocks over all those other dominoes, the cause and effect, so that in the end you have vitality, you have a strong immune system. And a lot of, um, say, scientists, perhaps even doctors, I don't know, uh, may, may or may not see the cause and effect relationship because it goes back so far and they're dealing with more the symptom types of things, you know, the last, you know, the last five or, or six uh, symptoms. But for having a sense of purpose actually does make a difference on all these other things. For example, it reduces stress. And chronic stress weakens the immune system. Having a purpose reduces your stress. Being aimless increases your stress. And so if you can reduce your stress by having a sense of purpose, then you're strengthening your immune system and you'll get sick less often. So that's kind of the cause and effect right there. Uh, number two, health, it, it, having a sense of purpose makes you have healthier lifestyle choices. Uh, wh when I was young, I had a, a purpose. When I went to college, I was the editor of a newspaper, the, the college paper. And I was very excited and motivated to do a good job on, on that newspaper. And because I needed the energy to, to basically stay up all night to get the last stuff done, Sometimes two nights in a row once I got into a car accident because of that. Anyway, another story. The uh, whole point being, because of my desire, I actually made, for the most part, except for the staying up at nighttime, good choices in what I ate because I wanted to be strong and fit and healthy and everything else. So get exercise, balanced diet, get enough sleep, which I did not do. Still not doing it, actually. Um, Fulfilling your purpose indirectly benefits the immune system by giving you positive emotions. Make sure you get your dose. Get your drugs. You, get, you need drugs. But make sure they're internal drugs. So your dose is D-O-S-E, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphin. These are the, the, the good, we need those. Dopamine sometimes is called the pleasure hormone or the pleasure drug. It's, that is a, a grossly oversimplification of it. The dopamine is more to do with the motivation drugs. So you gotta have motivation. The sense of hope, sense of anticipation of pleasure or reward, like winning the race or something like that. That's a dopamine. You need that. Oxytocin is the cuddle hormone. When you hug somebody for more than 20 seconds, it builds up oxytocin inside your system and that strengthens your health, physiologically speaking. Serotonin is the peace hormone, like a, ah, a serotonin in action. Ah, is that nice? And then endorphin is the, uh, what would I call endorphin? It's the get up and go hormone. It's the excitement. I'm excited about doing something hormone. Um, yeah, oh, it's, it's the hormone that allows us to push through pain in order to get the job done. That's what that hormone does. And so we need our dose. We need our dose. 
happiness and contentment that come from a sense of achievement all go together. And that comes from having a sense of purpose. You see? Having an aim. So if you don't have a purpose in your life, it's going to affect how many diseases you get, how often you get sick, etc., etc. Um, social connections. Sometimes, and I found this when I was the editor of the, the, the college paper, I was kind of a shy person, and still am, I guess. And But when I was the college editor of the paper, that not forced me to socialize, but gave me permission to socialize. And I had such a broad social life simply because I was doing my sense of purpose. And it really made a difference in my life. It gave me more vitality. Pursuing a purpose often involves social interactions and connections with others. Strong social connections are associated with a better immune system. Okay. I'm not going to read all these questions, but if someone says, well, I don't really know my purpose. How do I figure it out? Well, when you get to see this on the internet, on our website or something, I can give it to you if you want. Uh, I have it in my book as well, which God willing, hopefully will come out in May is when I'm kind of planning for it to be published. This is in the book. Discovering your top strength or discovering your superpower. Finding your superpower. Uh, what do people compliment you on the most? What do these compliments identify? Or do they identify a talent that you could put to work? What are you naturally good at that others just find hard to do? And it goes on and on. And so if you go through these questions, and you can help you know, your children, your grandchildren, uh, by giving these sets of questions to them. And when you do, and if they go through them, even one question, if they can answer it, like if it dawns on, some, dawns on them, there's something new that they haven't thought about before. You've just helped your child or grandchild save him from diseases in the future, just by helping him have a sense of purpose, uh, just by having him do that. You know you have a sense of purpose when you can fill in the sentence. I blank, so people can blank. I fix bicycles so people can ride safely. I take care of children so children feel loved. I teach full power principles so people can have optimal vitality. So if you can fill in that sentence, then that's when you know you've got a sense of purpose. And obviously you can see it's other oriented. It's not about me getting a million dollars or whatever it may be. Um, so that was that. Now the U stands for Unleashed Positive Spirituality. The U stands for Unleash Positive Spirituality, which begs the question, what about negative spirituality? And so um, <clears throat> I'm very glad to have this in here because it helps us to be transparent that we are, for the most part, I think, spiritual people. And spirituality has an effect on our immune system and on our health. Uh, it reduces stress. I won't read too much more, but it affects the immune system, of course. Spirituality, if we're in a community of spiritual people, then that's social support. It gives emotional, uh, positive emotions. If we are in a church environment or a social community uh, that's spiritual, and it's positive, it gives us positive emotions. It could be negative, and we have to kind of discern on that a little bit, uh, because feelings change physiology. So you have this happy person, and that happy feelings lead to basically it should be a healthy person. Now, she looks pretty happy. She is so happy that if I were as happy as her, I think I'd break my face. Um, but this only goes to show a merry heart, right, does good like medicine. And like medicine means it has a physiological effect on you. And so uh, here's something else that we can put in there. Uh, this is Dan Buettner from the Blue Zones. Uh, it appears, he says, this is a quote from him, it appears that people who pay attention to their spiritual side have lower rates of cardiovascular disease, depression. Dr. Lisa Miller will add more to that. Dr. Lisa Miller is somebody I'd recommend that you look up on how spirituality and depression are related. Stress, suicide, and the immune system seem to work better with those people who have a spiritual life. It's from Dan Buettner. Now, I did want to talk a little bit more. I mentioned this in my uh, early morning talk on Friday morning. Uh, 
and I just touched on it a little bit, but I would like to talk about toxic spirituality because just simply being part of a spiritual community doesn't automatically mean you're, you're part of a healthy community. Because and here's I, I want to kind of make some distinctions here. Now I put Ryland up there because I went to a party when I was younger. I was an atheist at the time, and I went to a, a party with Christians. And the the people who were at that party were really cool, nice people, and I wanted to be part of them more. But there's one guy, Ryland, who was just so judgmental. He was just an awful person. And he's representing Jesus. He's the one who says, if you don't give your life to Jesus, you're going to go to hell. That's what he told me. In front of 22 people in conversation. And so he seemed to me to have toxic spirituality. And so it fosters judgmentalism. It desires control. It's focused on external behaviors of self and others. It's open to imposing beliefs, imposing beliefs on others with little regard for their internal needs, and is driven by fear, guilt, or angst. If your spirituality is like this, may I suggest you change it right now uh, so that you can have positive spirituality, which is this. Nicole was the one who invited me to the party, and Nicole seemed to me to represent positive spirituality. So Ryland versus Nicole. Uh, increases compassion, strives for authenticity, Builds character by fostering inner peace, humility, integrity, forgiveness, acceptance, kindness, which is part of the fruits of the Holy Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, gratitude and connection. Strengthens self-control, another fruit of the Holy Spirit, and builds unity, empathy, and community, and allows freedom of choice, which is one of the uh, uh, tenets of Seventh-day Adventism. We call it religious liberty or freedom of conscience, and we believe in that. I believe in your right to be wrong. Pretty well is what it is, right? You're allowed to be wrong, and I can still love you and respect you, right? Uh, so that's healthy spirituality. But if you're wrong, and I don't like you because you're wrong, well, you just, that means uh, you've got, you got to work on that a bit. So we did say thoughts change physiology, which means thoughts can lead to disease, but also thoughts can lead to vitality and health. Just thoughts, just thinking thoughts. So think good thoughts, right? Um, I don't want to be Pollyanna about this, but the fact is it's science. It's science. So here's someone who's having worry. Did you know that worry, you can actually truly, scientifically worry yourself sick by worry. What does it say in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 34? Uh, verse 33, it says, seek ye first. God's kingdom, right? And all these things will be added unto you. And then in verse 34, take no anxious thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow will take care of itself. So, so don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, and it doesn't mean we don't, we're not responsible, but don't worry because worry has an effect on our immune system. And when we have a God who cares for us, then we're going to worry a whole, less, whole lot less often. Thoughts change physiology. Is it any wonder that Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath? Because having wrath can change our physiology as well. Thoughts can change our physiology. If we're happy and we have hope, hope increases the rates of healing. If you have a hope, if you're putting on a program in your community and you give them hope that they could actually walk without wheezing in the kitchen, you give them hope that they can have a purpose that makes them feel more confident in themselves, that very sense of hope boosts their immunity and it creates more rates of healing. And it has to do with the dopamine pathways in the brain as well. Having a clear conscience also helps. Uh, going to bed with a clear conscience decreases cortisol. That's the uh, stress hormone. And that allows for better sleep. And a better sleep has a number of other effects on us. If we don't get good sleep, or we do get good sleep, it makes a huge, huge difference on that. Having a clear conscience helps us to get better sleep. Psalm 23 talks about, well, it doesn't talk about it, but I'm going to say it talks about it. It talks about reducing cortisol. Psalm 23, the shepherd's psalm, right? How does that begin? Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, right? So you go through all the 123 words, I think it's 123 words, of Psalm 23, and that's basically saying, I have peace, and my cortisol levels are low, are low. 
Uh, we need cortisol to live, mind you, but we don't want them raging too high. Um, so uh, again, this is from Dan Buettner. He says, attending faith-based services four times a month adds, and I couldn't believe this, it's amazing, but according to statistics, four to 14 years of life expectancy, likely due to a sense of belonging, which we'll talk about next. The choice of denomination doesn't seem to matter, according to the, those studies. But can you imagine now, four to 14 years. So if, if having a sense of purpose that, that increases lifespan statistically uh, by four years. Uh, eating right increases your lifespan by another, I don't know, three to 10 years. And then you, you add them all up, you, you can live to be like 120, something like that, right? Maybe 200, whatever it is. It just, it just keeps on adding up, adding up. Um, connect your goals to an ideal greater than yourself. And you'll tap into a power that's also greater than yourself. I get these emails from this guy named Giovanni. Um, so here's Psalm 23, he restores my soul. Scientifically speaking, he reduces my cortisol levels. Probably not the most romantic way to put that. <coughs> Loveify your life is the third principle. And this guy was a professor at Harvard. He left Harvard after he wrote several books on happiness and success and thriving and things like that. His name is Sean Aker. He wrote a book, amazing book, called Big Potential, and also another book on happiness, I forget the title. He wrote in his study, see, he, he studied 1,600 students at Harvard looking for um, signs of success or predictors of success. Um, you have your hand up there, Ron? Five minutes to go, thank you. Yes, five minutes. Uh, so he said, I found that social connection was hands down the greatest predictor of thriving. Let me read that again. I found that social connection, not money, right? Not education, not success socially, uh, meaning status, but social connection was the greatest predictor of thriving both personally and academically at Harvard. And he's not the only one who came up with that conclusion, if you take a look at the Harvard Longevity Study on, on YouTube, uh, which is now led up by a guy named Willinger, something like that, uh, he'll say the same thing. So how interconnected do you feel? If you're low on the L, loveify your life, if you're low on that, that may explain some of the illnesses. And if you get yourself high on that over the long term, then that would help reduce the risk of illness, simply having good friends that you can trust in. That changes our thoughts, it changes our feelings, it changes our physiology. Does that make sense? And isn't that good news? Because in a healthy church, that's just what we have. And that's why people who go to church live longer than people who don't go to church, statistically speaking. Always kinds of exceptions, I know. So here are these two people. They look like they're getting along really well for many, many years. A young family, they're all happy, they're doing very well. I highly recommend anything that Dr. Nadine Burke Harris says. Uh, look her up on TED Talks, Dr. Nadine Burke, and she'll talk to you about ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. And the more of them we have in our childhood, the more diseases we have when we're adults, uh, she says. Nurturing relationships literally change our biology. When we have safe, stable, and nurturing relationships in our lives, it improves our neurologic functioning. It improves our hormonal regulation. What does? Good relationships. Just having a good relationship with somebody. Friendship could be husband or wife, it could be a buddy. It improves our immune functioning, which is what caught my attention when I'm trying to present this to you. Immune functioning, and these social supports are a critical part of healing. Social supports a part of healing. So we take in the whole person, not just the disease, not just a particular organ of the body, but the whole person together is what we need to focus on if we want to help people to have that optimal vitality. And I'll do, I'll end off with this one. Uh, launch your plan. So what we've done here, uh, when I finish the F-U-L-L, -L, um, that has to do with the mind. The P-O-W-E-R, has to do with the body. 
The POW has to do with what you put in your body. The ER has to do with what you do with your body. And so I'm just going to deal with the full of full power because that's the time that we have. Launch your plan. It's no good knowing stuff if you don't act on it, right? So you got to launch your plan. What habits will you start? I recommend a book by James Clear called Atomic Habits. How many of you heard the book? Atomic Habits. Yes, it's a great book. Great book. Um, and so I was inspired by that book. You don't need to understand all of this, but remember I talked about the bronze, silver, and gold. And so what we're going to do in Kelowna is help people launch a plan based upon these principles. And this is the, um, the, the, the called dashboard, the full power dashboard that we're going to give them, which is what I did here at camp meeting time. Some of you may have been there. Um, so you take your measurements, uh, your weight, your waist, your BMI, your blood pressure, your pulse, and your own uh, vitality assessment. You do that, and you go through the program, and then you do all that again, the measurements, right? And you see how you've increased. And so what my wife and I did is we started May 1. Uh, at the time when we did this a couple of years ago, we didn't have this chart, so it was kind of a, a rudimentary thing that we did. But we did kind of look at the various habits that we had, recognizing that the category of habits associated with the principles of optimal vitality, okay, kind of like New Start or like Full Power. So if, if uh, Ellen White or the Bible says um, trust in divine power or uh, adequate water, then you're thinking, okay, what habits can I associate with that principle of getting adequate water? How can I make myself drink more water if I need to? How much water should I drink? All that kind of stuff. What are those habits? And so we've developed 10 questions to ask, but you don't need to have 10 questions, just kind of generally measure yourself as best you can. Uh, and you might get, say, 83 on your chart, and you do that every week, which is what we did, and after the end of our month time, we call it a taste bud reset. That's what we called it. Because I read about you change your taste buds in three weeks. Well, it didn't work. My taste buds still stayed the same. Uh, but they say that you can change your taste bud in three... I think what, what happened was the pleasure centers of my brain still stayed the same. Maybe my taste buds changed, I don't know. So I had some problems with that. And so uh, in, the, in the seminar that I do, I actually share my own story of, of food addiction. And my grandfather was an alcoholic, and I wondered, was I like my grandfather? And I found out, and it took me two to four years to admit it to myself, that I think, yes, I have an addictive personality because of this, 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 and this. So that caused me to go to take a look at the habits that I had and how could I motivate myself, all that kind of stuff. And so I um, won't share too much of that here today, but that's kind of what we have. And so you, you start off with maybe, uh, you know, 45 uh, on all those habits that relate to the nine principles. And then you put them into practice for a month. And after a month, your last week, you measure yourself and maybe you're up to uh, 78, which is what my score was last time I did it. To be aware of new videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the Preparing for the Time of Trouble channel. For more free videos and downloadable audio podcasts, as well as handouts, go to www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Topic categories include recordings of live seminar presentations, country living, sustainable gardening, homestead remedies, how to be self-sufficient when the grid goes down, wild edible and medicinal plants, hydrotherapy, and end-time Bible prophecies. To take advantage of these free resources, go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.